Make It Glow Part 2, The Orton Effect, Smart Orton and Make It Glow, Actions by Tony Kuiper. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's Make It Glow Part 2. We're looking at some of Tony Kuiper's actions today and I love his Orton effects. Now just a little background here. Here's the original image and I'm linking this in the description below so you can download and follow along with me. I just did a little bit of cleanup on this image here and I'll show you. This is layer one. It's just a little bit of cleanup. Got rid of some of the junk in the image just to clean it up, make it look a little better. And I added uh, frequency separation. I've just done a video on frequency separation. You can go back and check that out just to clean up the front of this. I didn't like this leaf here that was a little bit too light right in here. So I wanted to clean that up and I used frequency separation to do that. And now let's just pull this whole image together by clicking this icon here on Tony CX panel. And all it does is it just pulls all those la layers together in a stamp layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it stamp. And now for the fun, let's come up to the TK7 CX uh, panel here. Or by the way, you may be using the uh, TK7 combo panel. Now they both come with uh, the TK7 panel for Photoshop when you purchase it off of Tony's website. And I'll link his website in the uh, description below if you're interested in purchasing his panels. On the combo panel, the actions live inside of here. And if you're on the uh, CX panel, which is the one I like to use, the actions are found right here. You're going to find the Orton actions inside of this color group here. Now you have an actions group here, you have a color group, and you have a blend group. But inside this color group, here's my Orton effect. Now I color coded it blue. I think I'm going to right click it and change it to yellow because I think I want my Orton effect, my smart Orton, and I think my make it glow action because these are the three actions we're looking at today. I'm going to make those all yellow. So we'll be working with these guys in yellow. I think it's going to help me to remember where they're at. But we're going to start out with the Orton effect. And all you need to do is give this a click. And when you do, you'll be greeted by this Gaussian blur dialog right here. Now, the radius right now is defaulted at 10. Now, it may be different depending on the image size. I'm not really sure there. But that's the default setting that'll come up. You'll get some number there. Okay, now, do you have to keep that number there? No. This is a good starting point. Uh, you can cut it back and you can see it changes the effect. It makes it less dreamy, less glowy. If I move it to the right, I can add a lot more dream to it. So play around with that. You could take it at the default setting if you like, or you could change it to whatever you want. But playing around is the key here. You never know what you're going to get until you play with this stuff and feel free to play. But if you're one of those type of people who don't like to play around, you just want the effect, just go ahead and accept it at the number it is and click OK. And after you click OK, you'll notice you have a group here called Orton Image. And inside there's two components inside of that Orton group. There's Orton Dark Image and Orton Light Image. Now these are what Tony uses to create this Orton effect. Don't ask me how this Orton effect is made. I don't really personally care. I'm just using Tony's action and it gets the job done. I'm sure you can find information on the internet if you look and if you really want to discover how Orton effects are made. There's all kind of different ways of doing Orton effects, but this is Tony's way and I really love it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. Let's click the uh, Orton image group. Here's the before the Orton and here's the after. But isn't that a beautiful dreamy glow? I really love it. Now you can come to this opacity on this group here and you can start to pull it back if you felt it was too strong. So you have all that adjustment as well. So you can get it just the way you like it. And let me show you what else I like to do. I like to use... Um, either Tony's TK7 Rapid Mask Panel or his TK7 Go Panel. And let's use his Rapid Mask Panel today. You get both of these panels when you purchase T uh, Tony's TK7 uh, Panel for Photoshop. And what I like to do is come to the mids here. And you have mids 1 and mids 2. Here's mids 1, what it looks like. And here's what mids 2 looks like. Now, I like to use mids 2. It's a little... Um, it's a little stronger effect, and I'll show you what I mean here. So what I'm going to do is choose Mids 2, and what I want to do is apply this to the um, Orton group here. So all I need to do is click this button right here, and if I, if I hold the option or I'll key down and hover over this button, it applies the Rapid Mask uh, channel as a layer mask to the current active layer on the Layers panel, which is this layer right here. So let me go ahead and do that. And when I do that, it applies that mids um, luminosity mask to it. So it, it 
it cuts the strength of the effect down. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. You see that? The before and the after. Now, what I can do is I can click on this layer mask right here and see where it says density. I can, if I wanted the effect to be a little stronger, I can take this density and start to ease it back a little bit and kind of tweak it and get it just the way I like it. And I'm thinking maybe right there is perfect for my taste right now. So you can use these luminosity masks in conjunction with the Orton effects, which is really cool. Another thing you can do is Tony also likes to use uh, lights luminosity masks. So experiment, try lights luminosity masks, try midtones luminosity masks, experiment and have fun. I'm going to throw you an added bonus right now. Okay, so we're on this uh, mids mask right here, right? And I pulled the density back to 70. Let's pull it up to 100% again. And I want to show you something really cool. There's a unique feature on the TK7 Rapid Mask, and that is, see where it says Layer Mask, this little checkbox? If you check this, just give it a click. And I'm going to show you something really neat to experiment on what different luminosity masks look like on the image. Whenever you click any mask, like for instance, right now, if I click a Mids 1 mask, you'll see this image change and you'll see this layer mask change. And you can see what how these different uh, luminosity masks affect this image. Watch, I'm going to click Mid 1s. And you notice, you see the change here on the mask. You see the change on the image. And now what if I want to see what a mid two looks like? I can click that and you'll see the change. Now let's try a mids three. And you notice we get a lot stronger Orton effect. And if you look at the uh, layer mask, you'll notice it's a lot lighter. Now let's click on lights one and notice the difference. Now lights two, let's try darks one. And now let's try darks two. So we could try different things, but I do like the mids too. So I'm going to put it back to mids too. And then I'm going to come down and click on the, uh, the layer mask and pull my density back to a 70. Because that's where I thought it looked the best for my vision today. But this is a really cool feature. Whenever this is checked here, you can go ahead and apply that layer mask to the active layer, which is really neat. I'm just going to uncheck it for now. But here's my before. Orton image and here's my after. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this group here and I'm going to shut the Orton image off, get back to our original. So now let's come back up to our TK7 actions and now let's try Smart Orton. So let's give it a click and see how it works. And with the Smart Orton, just like the Orton effect, we're greeted with a Gaussian blur dialogue. Now again, we can play with this. You know, we can change this for a more dreamier look if we want or leave it at the default setting whatever that setting is that comes up for you for your image. And once we get a setting that we like, we can go ahead and click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have a new group called Smart Orton. And inside that group, we have a layer called Highlights, a layer called Shadows and Blur, a layer called Unblur, and a layer called Adjust Contrast. Now inside of this um, group here, there's some things we can do. For instance, we could, there's a smart filter here for the Gaussian blur. So you could come here and double click this and we can go ahead and change this to a different glow type. You know, we can make it like a more dreamier glow by adjusting it like that. Okay. So we could come here and we can play around after the fact. So that's a nice feature. We have the uh, smart filter with the Gaussian blur. Uh, and then we have shadows blur here. Now, if we feel our shadows are a little bit too dark or we have too much contrast, we can take the shadow blur layer, make sure it's selected, and start to pull the opacity back. And you'll notice you'll lose some of the contrast and you'll open up the shadows. So that's a nice effect that you can do. Another thing that we can do is uh, come to this unblur layer. This is a unique layer. Select this layer here by clicking on it. And then if you take, and you'll notice it's in a linear light blend mode. If you take the opacity, which is defaulted to 40%, if you start to move it to the left, uh, things will get softer or, or a little bit out of focus. So if I go to zero, I get that nice dreamy look. It's slightly out of focus, but if you want to get it into more focus, you start to move that uh, opacity slider to the right. And as I do, you'll notice that it's going to get incrementally sharper and sharper. And that's a really cool uh, way of adjusting that glow. So you can make it a softer glow or a sharper glow. And that's a really great component of the uh, Smart Orton action.
I'm going to go ahead and pull that opacity back to around the default setting around 40% because that's generally the way I like my glows to look. And But I will experiment and play around, but I think that 40% is going to be good. And don't forget, you can come up to the uh, layer group here where it says Smart Orton, add a uh, luminosity mask onto that layer, maybe a midtones, a highlights, maybe even a shadows, whatever you prefer. So I've done that already on the regular Orton effect, so I'm not going to do it again because this video will get too long. And don't forget, you always have the opacity uh, control on the uh, group itself, so you can pull that back if you felt it's a little too strong. So lots of adjustments here. Tony gives us a lot that we can work with. I guess now you know why Tony calls it Smart Orton. Okay, so now let me go ahead and collapse this group and shut this one off. And I'm going to show you one more glow action. And it's found under actions, and that will be the one called Make It Glow. This one's simple, guys. All you do is click it once. And of course, you can adjust the radius if you want to, but I'm going to leave it right where it is by default. Go ahead and click OK. And we have this beautiful glowing effect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before. Here's the before and here's the after. The reds look a little oversaturated. An easy fix. Just come and get a hue saturation adjustment layer. And then with your targeted selection tool, uh, target a red and start to drag it to the left and just ease off in that red. And there you go. Well, there it is. Three more glow type effects to add to your arsenal of glow effects. These are from uh, Tony Kuiper from his TK7 panel for Photoshop. And I really enjoy these. I use them all the time. These are traditional Orton type effects, and I love them. If you have comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Now, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.